Star Wars has at times had a problem with ships getting a little too powerful, especially when their power is described in reference books rather than through in movie or in book actions. I think the best example of this is a ship that a lot of you have pegged as one of my favorites, the Nebula Star Destroyer. So let's talk about that and examine how this ship should probably be considered versus how the reference material sometimes describes it. So the lore behind the Nebula Star Destroyer is a bit messy because the class has had several names and it's been at times unclear what exactly this ship type is. For example, in Kraken's Threat Dossier, which was a somewhat early RPG source book, we don't have the Nebula class Star Destroyer, rather it's the Defender class and it's described as a fully capable cruiser with more shielding and armor than any known ship in the galaxy. Despite only being 65% the size of a Star Destroyer, it was capable of taking on any single enemy Star Destroyer, two heavy cruisers, or basically a fleet of smaller ships. The Essential Guide to Warfare would actually clarify that the Defender Class Star Destroyer is the same thing as the Nebula, and just for clarity's sake, because most people know the name Nebula, that's what I'm going to use for this video. That book also states, again, that smart design allowed the 1,040 meter ship, a pocket star destroyer, to output an extreme amount of firepower. Probably the one source that paints the nebula as the most powerful would be the starships of the galaxy guide. And I'm just going to read excerpts from this to really prove my point. The nebula class can take on anything short of a super star destroyer and is designed to act as a respectable threat even to those adversaries. Coupled with the support ships that almost always accompany it and the ship's own complement of craft, a nebula can face down any threat short of a massed armada. The mere presence of a nebula star destroyer can turn the tide of battle thanks to its impressive fire support. Obviously, I think that description of the nebula doesn't make sense. There's no way that a ship that's just over a kilometer long, smaller and significantly less massive than an Imperial Star Destroyer would be capable of facing down a Super Star Destroyer or could act as a fleet onto its own. Nonetheless, the nebula does have this sort of famous reputation propagated by people like me and again, these somewhat problematic reference books. How powerful would the nebula actually be? I think that's a really interesting question. First of all, has there been some advancement in technology which would suggest that a nebula, despite its smaller size, could radically outpower something like an Imperial Star Destroyer? No, I don't think so. Reading through the Bantam era of Star Wars, the nebula, by the way, was first introduced in the Black Fleet Crisis, we don't really see the New Republic making any dramatic jumps in terms of the technology actually in their ship. Certainly, they do make some improvements, and they even make some new devices like the Hyperwave Inertial Momentum Sustainer, and they great, great designs in, for example, the MC-90, and of course, the new class line of ships. But I don't think there's anything to suggest that a ship this small could hold off a Super Star Destroyer. I do think it's believable that through efficient design, better weapon placements, and less of a worry about, say, Tarkin Doctrine ideas, that something like a Nebula Star Destroyer could take on, say, an ISD, but going beyond that starts to really push my believability of things. So in other words, move away from the description in the Saga Edition Starship of the Galaxy Guide and look more towards other sources. Even that, however, may be a bit much given the fact that we know the New Republic liked to rely on their starfighters and the new class project had the Defender Starfighter, they used E-Wings, K-Wings, X-Wings, B-Wings, and more. That, to me, a carrier ship which can still fight it out with enemy Star Destroyers is a more interesting, I think, description of the ship. Ultimately, it is a somewhat moot point because we don't really see the Nebula fight it out too frequently, and that's definitely the case with other ships in Star Wars. For example, the World Devastator is described in both the Dark Empire comics and the source book as being totally indestructible. Its shield and its armor is so powerful that it just cannot be destroyed by conventional means. Then you have the gameplay of Rogue Squadron for the N64. Is it realistic that Palpatine hiding way on Biss could create something that's indestructible? Destructible? I don't know. Another ship which gets this super special treatment, but which actually is brought out by the source material, is the Sun Crusher. And that's a ship that's described as having all of these incredible features. It can tank, 
pretty much anything thrown at it. It can destroy an entire solar system, but we see it actually do those things. It survives a shot from a partially constructed Death Star. It does destroy the Karita system. That's a situation where it's not so much the writing and reference books sort of mischaracterizes the ship. Rather, the ship itself is just not interesting. It's too overpowered. But guys, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this shorter rambling video. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.